It's Thursday the 4th of June 2020 and I'd like to welcome you to a webinar with Stephen Fawkes Question and Answers on Languages, an update. Um, my name's Helen Myers, I'm the Chair of the London Branch. I'm also on the Management Board of ARRL and a former President. Um, I always mention my thanks to Phil, um, Heike Philp, who helped us set all of these things up. And I'd particularly like to um, mention that Krista Hazel is going to be joining us and she's a member of AWL, a very important person, and she'll be joining in on the chat as well. Um, if you're a member of AWL, please could you use now as the opportunity to write in the chat that you're a member and to encourage others to join. Um, it's been lovely to see the numbers of people who have been joining recently as they come along to the webinars and got to know people. So please do use the chat to do that. Um, you'll have a link um, soon and at the end to say where you can get all of this information afterwards. So as well as seeing the recording, Stephen is going to be giving a handout which will give references to everything he's talking about. That will be housed on this webinar site and everybody will have a copy of that, certainly by tomorrow. Can I just advertise things that are coming soon? So first of all, next week, um, you can have more of Stephen because if, especially if you're an NQT, this is particularly for people who are about to be a, um, teachers. And um, there are two sessions he's offering next uh, Tuesday and next Thursday. Um, and then on next Friday, we've got uh, Chris Hart coming along to talk about the Google Classroom. So he's over in Australia. So that's why it's a little bit of a different time. It's 10 o'clock in the morning on the Friday. And then we have an AWL June event, which is um, running as if it were the June event in London, but online. And that's going to be live and not recorded. Um, that's on June the 20th. Um, whether you're joining us on Zoom or YouTube, I'd remind you about our etiquette that we're professional and kind, and that AWL is happy to host speakers and participants free of charge. Um, speakers and participants are responsible for what they say. So this is a webinar with Stephen Fawkes. That's who Stephen Fawkes is. You'll have read that already on the, um, uh, the details. So twice president of the Association for Language Learning, now a trustee membership officer, um, and a, very importantly, a fellow of the association and chair of AWL branch in the northeast of England. And you've got his very impressive biography there. So now over to Stephen, I'm going to be stopping my presentation and he will be opening his. Okay. Hello everyone, can you see my presentation now? I think I've just put it mm -hmm. up there. Yes. All right. So I know what you've really come to for tonight is to see how long my hair has grown in the time since we went into lockdown. And as you can probably see, I'm into Old Testament time now. It's just coming down nicely onto the back of my shoulder. That's why I had to sit with the light on that side. Otherwise, I would have dazzled you from the screen and you wouldn't have been able to see anything I'm showing you in the presentation I have for you this evening. <laughs> so this presentation is based on what we call the road shows. These are presentations like this one that we send out at half term holiday every term to our AWL local groups. So that's the branches, the networks and the primary hubs. And for this one, I've combined those presentations together to make a single one. So you'll be able to tell when the color changes, dark blue is normally for the branches and networks and pale blue is for the hubs. And the red one is for Helen Meyer's challenge, which is a special feature you don't get in every roadshow. So I'm going to see if this will now advance for me. There we go. So thank you very much for coming along and best wishes for everything that you're doing and trying to do in your personal life as well as your professional life. It's a very difficult time for everyone. And now that a lot of schools have just started to go back with their pupils and they're managing that, I imagine that's very difficult indeed. Uh, so thank you for coming along and spending your time with us this evening. If you don't know about AWL, then there's a little bit of information. We are a charity, we're run by members. Nearly everyone who works with AWL is a member and a volunteer. We have a very small team of people in the office who do our admin for us, who are on contract to us. But all of the things that you see in our publications and our events 
are managed by volunteers like Helen. Uh, so for the time being, at the moment, because we have a discount offer, if you do know people who are not members, then do point them to that. Um, there's a link in the magazine that I'll mention to you and a link in this presentation later on. So there are some reasons there that you can look back on later on if you need a few reasons to give to other people who don't know about AWL and you think they ought to be members. Those are some of the advantages that our members have given to us in going. And we are in our 30th year, year by the way. A lot of agencies, as you know, have been busy on languages over the time I've been a teacher since the 1970s have now disappeared, the ones that were funded by the government previously. Um, but we, as an independent charity, are still going. So that's a great achievement. So I've told you that just now. And the idea of those local groups is that they are for local people to get together and to support each other. Being a language teacher is a very unusual job. We're not the same as other teachers. Uh, we have different things that we worry about and want to talk about. And we need the support of other language teachers because we are so unique in a way. The thing that we do is not just about purveying knowledge, things that people are going to have to learn and then regurgitate. We are trying to give people attitudes, introduce them to cultural awareness and to personal relationships and communication skills that are unique really to our classrooms. So because we have those special concerns, we need to remind ourselves and each other what it is we're about, why we do what we do, why we're so um, passionate about languages or an individual language indeed, and what it is we want to put across to our learners. And that's why people come together in these meetings, not just to listen to people, but to talk to each other, to have ideas, to share ideas, and to remember why they became a language teacher in the first place. So the local groups, as I say, are run by volunteers around the country. Um, and if you're in a local group, I can't see the chat at the moment, by the way, so I can't see where that's gone. I'll try and find that in a minute. Um, if you're in a local group, are you going to tell me, Helen? Well, yes, because I'm, I'm just looking here at the chat. So if you want to open the chat now, you I, I would... I don't know where it is. I thought it was at the bottom. Hmm. But it may have disappeared. So if you, if you go to the top, okay. um, then I'm normally on. it appears yeah. there or it's on a down one. I've got Otherwise, it. Otherwise, I am looking at the chat so I can tell you just... Yeah. People here are introducing themselves to say which um, branches they belong in, and there are some questions about where they are. For example, is there one in the northwest or whatever? Do we have a list of where they are? There is. So if you look on the website and you look in the bit called About AWL, you'll see a thing about communities, and in there you'll find a section called AWL Local, where you'll find the names of all of the groups in the different areas of England mm -hmm. and Wales. Um, and as the people are introducing themselves now to say, I'm in charge of this. So we've got Lisa there who's in um, Oxfordshire. So can I just say, we'll look at the chat afterwards where people have deliberately said, can you tell me where I'm on your branches? Yes. We'll get in touch with you and yet let you know because I've got Absolutely. all your email addresses. That's Absolutely. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is if you are in an area and there are areas where there isn't a local group at the moment for one reason or another, it might be we can put you in touch with somebody else and you can be a baby. You can be a baby network, or a baby primary hub and start to explore uh, who would, will join you in your new family in that part of the country. So on so, that, uh, I can just say Helen Stokes has just written there, there will be one soon in the West Midlands. So that's Helen Stokes and Anna Granger who are here, yeah. who noticed a gap, who've put themselves forward, who've got in touch with Stephen and that's happening, isn't it? Yes. So what I'm gonna to try to do in this uh, event this evening is to show you a little bit about what's in those roadshows uh, and explore some of the themes because they're largely about updating and about bringing you uh, new documents that might have emerged that you haven't had time to look at. Um, then I will be asking you to participate. Obviously, I'm asking Helen to participate particularly because she has a challenge which she's mentioned to you that she's going to be performing before very long. Um, so I'm going to be showing you things on the website and things on different websites um, which you won't have time to look at during the presentation. Uh, but they are all in the handout, which you'll receive in the email from Helen tomorrow. Um, so you'll be able to look at them once you get that handout instead, to your heart's content. Okay, now that's okay. So at the moment, as we know, uh, the world is a very strange place. And so what AWL has been doing 
really since the time of Language World Conference, which was the last time we got together, really, which is very unusual for us because we're very sociable usually. Language World Conference was in Manchester this year. It was, again, a lovely event. Everyone was in good form and cheerful in spite of all the pressures we have in the outside world. Uh, and at the time, of course, we had no idea what was going to come afterwards. So since that, which was the week before the lockdown, really, um, we've been working, especially Krista, who's our um, development manager, has been working on the website to try and point to lots of sources support of support for teachers in different sectors, different languages, and in, in search of resources or training events like webinars or of support of different sorts, projects and ideas and so on, has been putting those together on that home page. So if you haven't had a look at that one, that's where you'll find a lot of things grouped together from all of our partners and friends, as well as our members and corporate members. And on that same page, you can currently download our magazine, Languages Today, which is a magazine normally reserved for members. It comes out once a term. And uh, for this particular circumstance we're in, uh, and because we couldn't send out our magazine as we normally do, because uh, of restrictions with postage and so on, we decided to make the magazine a, a, a digital one and to make it available to anyone who'd like to read it. So anyone you know <coughs> languages of one sort or another, point them to the website where they can download that magazine and then they hopefully will see how interesting AWL is and join us so that we can, um, we can get, bring them into our idea factory as well. Heather, anything to ask? I love that word, idea of an idea factory. <laughs> so the chat is going on where people are introducing themselves and giving information. And certainly, yeah. I think probably for us to put, obviously, you'll have a link to that magazine, but we can put that in the chat as well so that you can go straight there. It's absolutely superb. And thanks very much to you, Stephen, and also to um, Krista. You've worked very hard on that. It's great. And all the contributors. That's what's lovely, yeah. isn't it, as well? That's, that's what's been nice about it. The feedback's been very nice from all those people who read it. So I've just put together on this screen a list of the items in this current magazine, uh, which by the way is bigger than our magazine usually is because it was digital. We didn't have to worry about the number of pages we had so much. And um, so one or two things in there to highlight that are, are, that are of great interest if you haven't read them. So creative translation was a session at Language World. And then um, what's her name? I forgot her name starts with a C from Oxford, Charlotte wrote us a little article about it. So that's in the magazine as well. Um, it's not as serious as it sounds, it's translation, but it's with a creative angle. So it makes a lot of sense and it's very uh, enjoyable read. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the primary blog because that's one of the issues around just at the moment. Uh, teaching and learning, this is a new theme for us this year, one of our new um, topics. Uh, we took, uh, again, a session from Language World that Martin Fillette did for us about GCSE objectives, and how they impinge on what teachers are doing in Key Stage 3. So that's a very interesting reflection on the content of the course in Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4, and whether the GCSE style activities do move back into Key Stage 3 comfortably, or whether we are actually stressing ourselves by trying to do that. Cultural capital I'm going to explore a bit later on today as well, because that's a big theme in our Ofsted uh, uh, inspection framework as well. Um, World of Language, Add and Stir Gently is a title which doesn't tell you anything about what the article is about, but it's quite an intriguing one. That's actually an article about why one of our colleagues in the CLIL project we're working on at the moment decided that CLIL was a good idea for him and his students in Vienna. That's why it's about cooking, you see, because that's what you do in Vienna. A Day in the Life has been a feature in the magazine since it began, uh, and this time we went for a language learner, we'd never had that before. So that's a year seven pupil from a school in London writing about how busy her life is, uh, not just in school, but outside school, and how uh, when you're in that part of London, you're surrounded by languages in all different aspects of your life. My Best 10 is a regular feature, and this time we went for memories because we're in our 30th anniversary year. So that was a number of contributors, some of whom are on the, the, the chat over there, to the, my left today as well, talking about their, what, they, what they've taken away from AWL over the years. Either something they've read, someone they've met, an event they've been to, 
or whatever it might be. So that's a very nice informal piece of information from, um, from real people who you can see very often, you can see in the, in the images on these screens at the moment. Uh, online teaching obviously has been a highlight recently and I'll come back to that in just a moment. Uh, the next one, the view from another new theme for us. And this time we asked a teacher who's just moved to this country, well, three years ago now, from being a primary teacher in Spain, she came to being a primary teacher here, thinking it would be a straightforward change of place and finding our system very art in some respects. So she's writing about our oddness and weirdness, which is something we just stand up and be proud about, but there we are. <laughs> In the classroom, this is an item by Michael Wardle, who is the HMI for Languages, who spoke at Language World again for us this year. And he's talking in that article about the findings of their inspections of high achieving primary schools, looking at geography, languages, and I think it might be history, I can't remember. <coughs> he's talking about what, what, what is a good feature that they observed and what would be a worrying feature. So it focuses on primary, but obviously it is equally transferable to secondary. And then we've got opportunities to be active, which is our theme at the moment, really trying to engage our members in doing more because everything we do is done by our volunteers. So if you haven't seen the language world, if you haven't been to language world ever, <coughs> think about coming sometime. Uh, there are articles in the magazine I've just mentioned, but there are also uh, presentations on the Language World website, which I'll now try and um, share with you. So you can see, if I can find it, I've got a few things open there. It's not that, that's not mine. It's disappeared. <coughs> so I'm not going to show you that you because I can't. Your, um, your audio as well to join in a little bit because I introduced you at the beginning. I've only just, I've made you co-host, that'd be great. Krista, is that? Yeah, so I was just thinking Krista could, she, she could join in as well. Hello, Krista. Hello, hello everyone, evening. I'll, um, if you want, Stephen, I can put the link in the chat and people can click on it if you want. It's in the handout, so they'll be able to do it tomorrow, but it is set up. I just can't quite work out why I can't see it. I know I set it up beforehand and now it's just disappeared off my little options screen there. No, it still doesn't want to come back. So never mind. I'll just go back to my presentation. Uh, so there are presentations there, obviously, for primary and for secondary and for different languages. Uh, and a range of them, uh, the, present, the, the speakers at Language World have given their presentation for people to look at. Some of them aren't allowed to give them, obviously. Uh, HMI doesn't allow. Ofsted to give their presentations away, for example, but a lot of them are there. Just, there was a question there about um, the Languages Today magazines as to whether or not any were available, back, backdated ones. Have we got a, a, them anywhere? Yeah. On the website, if you go to the uh, along the tab at the top, you'll see the shop, and in the shop you'll find some back numbers of the magazine that right. is up for sale. And Krista will tell me if I'm wrong. No, you're absolutely right, Stephen. There are some there. There are also um, there were some in the office, but of course the office is closed at the moment. And for those people that came to Language World, um, they we had hundreds of copies, back copies there, and they were taken to be shared. Um, so we'll see if we've got any left back in the office when that opens again. Uh, so yes, just to point out again, the membership office with offer, which is in the uh, magazine and is also in this presentation. For anyone who you know who isn't yet a member, there is an offer just at the moment. The other thing you might not know, even those people who do receive their Languages Today magazine, is that we often receive articles that are too long to fit into the physical magazine. So we have an area of the website called LT Extra, Languages Today, Extra or Extended Content. This is in the members only area, so you do need to be a member to go to that. But for the time being in there, there is particularly one uh, article which doesn't appear in the magazine because there wasn't space for it, but is very, uh, very well worth reading on the matter of um, cultural capital, which I shall come back to in just a moment. So we have, as well as our magazines, we produce other things that we publish on the website, one of them being what we call briefings. The idea of these is that they are 
short documents which a busy teacher might have time to read. So it's not the whole of a report that comes out of the DfE or the British Council or one of those bodies who produce such things. It'll be a digest of that, uh, selected for what whoever did the, the briefing thinks is significant for language teachers. So there are two new briefings that have gone up there in the last month. We produce one of these about once a month. Uh, and the two new ones are this one about reevaluating the scheme of work, which also features in the magazine. Um, and the other one is about cultural capital. So this one uh, is based on primary because we feel that primary teachers, especially at the moment, uh, especially those people who are not specialist language teachers, they're classroom teachers who've been told thou shalt now be responsible for languages as well, uh, might be a bit puzzled about what it is they're supposed to be doing in the light of um, the Ofsted framework and so on and so on. So we decided to draw together some questions really about their scheme of work so that if they do want to interrogate it and see if it needs updating, uh, they have some basis on which to do that. So you'll see what the main points are that we've put into that briefing. So the focus on vocabulary, phonics and grammar, is that reflected properly in the scheme of work? Does it meet the intent that they have expressed for what they want to do in languages in their schools? That will be the same for secondary schools as well, as well of course. Coverage of the National Curriculum Program of Study or Curriculum of Similar Challenge. That's something that inspectors will be looking into as well. So do, are they familiar with that program of study? Do they know what's in their scheme of work? Would they be able to answer questions from an inspector about why they're doing something and why they're doing it in that order and what they think their children are getting out of it? Those sorts of questions that people who are specialist teachers, it's in our blood. But if you're not a specialist teacher, you need to be pointed towards it. And then the other one I've just got on there is about the sequencing question, one that Michael talked about a lot in his talk at Language World about how, why we teach things in a certain way. Is it logical? Does it make sense? Does it support progression of the children who it's supposed to be helping? So I'm just going to show you, hopefully this one will share for me, the uh, briefing on reevaluating the scheme of work. There it is. So you'll see this is the whole of the document and it's four pages long. Uh, and the idea is that there's a bit of an introduction that tells them what the main points are. So this is the point of having a scheme of work in the first place. Uh, some of the, the waivers, some of the things they need to know. So a lot of non-specialist primary teachers uh, don't realize that there isn't an approved scheme of work. There isn't something that is a national expectation. And also that there isn't a defined level of achievement at the end of the key stage. So these are things they need to know. And then some of the current developments that are going on, again, that might be new to them, uh, so we've just learned about this one uh, from ASCO. We're going to be producing uh, a handbook, no, a toolkit, they're calling it, about transition, where they're going to be <laughs> recommended, uh, recommending a minimum amount of content, content that they think children learning languages might have in their basket knowledge when they move on to secondary schools. And there's the point of it. We're trying to do this for people who are considering updating or enhancing their scheme of work. We're not saying you must update your scheme of work because they might be perfectly happy with it. But they might need to know some of these things. So now it's just going into a bit more detail about those issues, why the focus is there at the moment, and then what it means when Ofsted talks about knowing words, the things that children would actually need to know about those words. It's not just knowing the word when you say, what's the French for house? But it's being able to do all these things with it. And that's why the, um, the project that's going on at the moment in secondary, called NCELP, is recommended recommending a more focused vocabulary, not a huge vocabulary, um, but lots of opportunities to revisit that vocabulary and become very familiar with it and really know it, not just vocabulary, but also some verbs, names of verbs the cultural aspect there as well, and then the actual documents in case people want to go and read them. So that's what um, the beginning of the briefing looks like. And the last of it is this bit here, the last section rather, is just things that we think language teachers or primary teachers who aren't language teachers might want to think about, might want to talk about with their colleagues, might want to ask their heads and senior teachers 
for if they're looking for some funding or support for training or whatever it might be. So it's just po pointing at some of those things that they might not think about. Oh, my internet connection is unstable all of a sudden. And that's it, that's the end of what a briefing looks like. So there are now 23 of those, which is, um, which is good. Some of them now are quite old, of course, because they started with the, um, with the language trends report in 2018. So we're not gonna be reading that one anymore. Um, but some of them are still relevant um, that are up there too. Anyone got any comments, Helen? Yes. Yes. Um, people are very interested in the briefing. I think even those of us who are used to being in AWR, we don't. I don't always know my way around the website. Where Where are they? Is it a very obvious place? So, if you go, there's a search button on the top right of every page. If you write into their briefing or teacher briefing, it'll take you to one of them. But there is a there is a link. I have think I might have it on my next screen. I think so I've got a link in the presentation or on yeah. the handout anyway. Um, I've put one, um, Pippa asked a question, and I know Kerry and, and a few other people have too. I've put the link to the briefings, but actually when you go to the ALL website on that first page, you'll see the scrolling banner. And if you just um, scroll down that page, there's four small blocks. One that starts with competitions, uh, elapse is one of them. And the final one, I can't remember what the second one is. The final one is the teach briefings. If you click on there, that will take you to the link that I've just put in the chat for everyone. And again, the teacher briefings are in the members area, so, so uh, you get a red message if you're not a member, you wouldn't be able to get there yet. Um, so just a bit now of information from around the country of things that have been going on in spite of the context we've been in. Um, people are still supporting each other, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and a lot of it, these things obviously are happening online. So um, there has been debate today on Twitter, those of you who have been on Twitter, about drama. They've been having a creative multilingualism conference and talking about what's happened to drama in languages, why has that disappeared? And we um, had talked to the people in the Multilingual Performance Project uh, back before Christmas about doing a session for us up here in the Northeast. Um, they couldn't do it obviously because they weren't allowed to come and we weren't allowed to meet. So they moved it online and it's a workshop that they then had to repeat another four times because it was so popular and so well received. Uh, so but they have got an article on the website and they're going to contribute another piece for Languages Today next time round. So you'll be able to keep in touch with their ideas, even though their project actually ends um, at the end of this month. They're only funded until then. AWL York held a Zoom meeting uh, in May, as you can see, and that's been stored. So if anyone is in primary and wants to look at what they were talking about, uh, Susie has hosted it on her website, Polyglot Languages and they're planning their next um, webinar to be uh, not this month, but before the end of term. So they're doing that. Um, Natalie Paris, who's one of our teachers up here in the Northeast, works a lot on YouTube nowadays. She has nothing better to do with her time. And so she's been creating these resources for children to, and parents to use at home. They're there, they're there for free. And there's dozens of those, which Krista has collated on the website for you too. Uh, in the Southwest, uh, we had a report from Charlie. There's a photo of their lockdown lunchtime, um, which was a, a, an idea that they had if they couldn't get together and have a cup of tea, which is obviously what they do most of the time in Bristol. What else would you do in Bristol? <laughs> apart from meet up with language teachers and have a cup of tea. Um, and so this is how she describes it, to be as interactive as logistically possible. That's a language teacher talking, doesn't it? That's what we really want to get at. And they got 60 people in a very short time into that event as well. So then she gives us some hints. So if you think you'd like to try that, try and get together a little Zoom conference or something like that, then look back to this presentation. And then Charlie and her friend Katie there will give you some ideas about things that worked for them or things you don't need to worry about. So now we're coming towards Helen's big challenge. I can see that the... the um, the adrenaline started to pour through her oh. bloodstream now. <laughs> so this is, a, this is an event that we have invented up here in the Northeast. Uh, there's a competition called Strictly Speaking, which AWL invented a few years ago with Roots into Languages, which is a, a competition for poetry recitation. We were going to do it this year. We we're going to pilot it up here in the Northeast. We had never managed to do it beforehand. And then of course everything happened, so we couldn't do it because it's all about getting people together in a room and listening to each other talk poetry. 
So instead, we've turned it into, instead of strictly speaking, it's now called strictly in isolation, which sounds quite dramatic, I think. And it's the same basic idea. So our original idea was it would be for year eights because we're trying to give them a positive languages experience before they think about making their options. Um, nowadays, we've opened it for year nine as well in case teachers want to have year nine entering. So the idea is there, you can see it, that they choose a poem, we give them a little uh, anthology they can pick from if they want to, or they can find their own poem in their target language. They rehearse it, hopefully they learn it by heart, and then they perform it. And they make a film of themselves if they're allowed to make film of themselves according to their school rules, or they make an audio and they make a presentation to go with it, which could be a visual presentation or it could be just the words of the poem that they've animated or something like that. Then they send that to their teacher, the teacher sends it to us, and then we put it onto a YouTube channel uh, where we control people's comments. And then the idea is that we encourage other people, other teachers in particular, to go there, have a look and make some nice comments to these teenagers who've had a go at reciting a poem in a foreign language. And then we give them a certificate at the end. So we had our first entry today, a German poem uh, about a mouse. Um, and, but the film was actually about hamsters. I'm not sure whether that eliminates them from the presentation or not. Oh, because of that, um, I asked Helen if she would accept a challenge from me today. That's why she's got the red screen. Um, and so she, Helen has undertaken to learn a poem for us in French, which is actually in our anthology as well. And she's going to see if she can do it for us now live. Um, and obviously I've asked David, if you'll just check, she hasn't got a script in front of her and she's doing it from memory, but it's all about celebration. So it doesn't really matter if she does and look to one side. And then afterwards, I'm going to ask Helen what she thinks she gained from the experience. Hola. Hola. Oh, hola, hola. First of all, I'm afraid to mute. I'm really sorry, Rosa. Sorry. <laughs> so, Helen, would you like to introduce your poem? Yes. And if I can just say that I cannot memorise words. I tried to go into the school play but couldn't remember words, so didn't do it. So this has taken a lot of effort and I've never got it totally right. But I shall try tonight for you. So... Le Concre par Jacques Prévert, Parole. Il dit non avec la tête, mais il dit oui avec le cœur. Il dit oui à ce qu'il aime, mais il dit non au professeur. Il est debout, on le questionne. Tous les problèmes sont posés. Soudain, le fou rire le prend. Et il efface tout, les chiffres et les mots, les dates et les noms, les phrases et les pièges. Et malgré les menaces du maître, sous les houées des enfants prodiges, avec des craies de toutes les couleurs, sur le tableau noir du malheur, il dessine le visage du bonheur. <laughs> now, if you can work your, your clapping emojis, I think now is the time to do that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ellen. Yeah, we're getting some bravos there. Very good. And um, I didn't make this mistake, I know, but anyway. <laughs> I put in an extra met where there shouldn't be one. Okay, but only you knew that. We wouldn't have known that, you see, because that you, you carried it off, you put it across, which is what we want the children to think about, the teenagers to think about when they're trying to perform it as well. It's not about being absolutely right with everything. It's like on Young Musician. We like the people who are very, very accurate violinists, but we love the ones who perform it better, who communicate better. You can't that's that's you're, just, you're, just a chat. you're wonderful people. You're ever so good, especially when you're French people saying nice things. <laughs> That's the thing I'm most, most anxious about. <laughs> so, um, so what do you think, Helen, what do you think you got out of me giving you that challenge? I'll be honest, I thought it was a brilliant challenge. No one has ever asked me to do that. But I said I'd had a bad experience at school of having to learn words and I couldn't do it and got too anxious. 
Um, but really, yes, it made me concentrate on the sound words. So I bothered to go to YouTube to hear it being pronounced by a real French person. I found a wonderful YouTube video where it was done slowly and then fast because even as a French teacher, sometimes you forget, where do I do the liaison? Do I do sous les yeux, you know, where, where does it come up? So it really made me think about that pronunciation. Obviously the meaning, I bothered, I wanted to know what it meant, but also it was looking at the poetry and the structure and thinking, so how can I memorize this? And that made me think, oh yes, got the balance of the words and then, you know, the, the les chiffres, the, the, the little unit, the, the, the numbers and then les, les, um, les mots, the words, and then a little bit more to les dates et les noms, a bit more meaning, and then even more meaning les phrases et les pièges. So that made me think about the meaning. And I kept on forgetting about putting in the malgré les menaces du maître. And then I thought, oh, that sounds good, malgré les menaces du maître. So I did think about the alliteration. Um, so it was, it definitely had the phonetics of it, the sound, the meaning, and then even <coughs> deep, deep how about <coughs> Is that all right anymore? Yeah, that's lovely. I've just, I've just lost everything at the moment. Can I've I just help lost find I'm just going to go back to, to share again. Okay. And I don't know if anybody else would like to say what they think. Is the chat, what, what do you think is the value of people learning poetry? And I didn't look at the book. Look, it's here. And I had it there. <coughs> Dear me, sorry, my laptop's gone weird. One thing you can do is send me the PowerPoint and I can then show it here and move it forward. In fact, didn't you, did you send it to me as a... Uh, no, I don't think I did. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm going to do, I tell you what, I am just going to pause the recording now so that I'll pause it. <sighs> Just talk amongst yourselves. And some lovely comments there made about the reason for it. Merci. Merci, Charlie. <laughs> um, so my PowerPoint is now opening again. I don't know why it closed, but there we are. Um, so I hope to get back to that in a moment. But just to say, first of all, thank you to Helen for doing that. In tribute to that, I have put Le Cancre by uh, Jacques Prévert onto the AWL Literature Wiki today with some ideas of how you might exploit that if you were doing it with a class as well. So um, there you are, you've contributed to the Wiki unknown to yourself, Helen. Thank you, so I'm going to put it called Le Con. And just to say, I mean, I know particularly because when every time I take our students to French exchange, we go to school in Paris and we have a French teacher who will do a lesson for them. And she always uses that as the poem to do with them. Um, I've yet to tell her that really we're not quite into being able to analyze the emotions and inferences of it, <laughs> that really just knowing the words to begin with would be, would be good. But obviously it's one which they, they use anyway. And I think it's particularly well suited, isn't it, to, to school children to learn that one. Um, now it won't find my PowerPoint this time. Right, would you like to send it to me and I can then um, <coughs> share it? Am I emailing it to you? Oh, yes, if you want to send it by email, and then I'll okay. collect that, and then I can... So while we're waiting for that to work for us, um, I don't know why it stopped, um, my challenge was going to be to do another poem. This is a poem that I learnt when I was 14, and to balance it up, this one is in German. Uh, and then I wanted to talk to you about how I used it a few weeks ago with a, a class of year eight. Um, so this poem is by Heinrich Heine, and it's called De Asra, and um, you'll need your handkerchief because it's a, a romantic weeping poem. And so you have, before have, you start, have you sent it to me just so I know? No, I'm just going to do that. It hasn't quite finished opening yet. All right, okay, right. Okay. So, so you have to imagine, first of all, uh, a Could romantic... Could you start recording image. again? Could you stop, stop? I'm going to stop because I okay. paused it. Woo! <laughs> right, and 
resume. So we, we are in the Middle East. We are by a wadi or something like that. We have a, a Sultan's palace. We have a fountain and we have his beautiful daughter who is wandering around and the slaves standing by as well. That's the romantic scene. Täglich ging die wunderschöne Sultanstochter auf und nieder um die Abendzeit am Springbrunnen, wo die weißen Wasser plätschern. Täglich stand der junge Sklave um die Abendzeit am Springbrunnen, wo die weißen Wasser plätschern. Täglich war er bleich und bleicher. Eines Abends trat die Fürstin auf ihn zu mit raschen Worten. Deinen Namen will ich fassen, deine Heimat, deine Sippschaft. Und der Sklave sprach, ich heiße Mohammed, ich bin aus Jemen und mein Stamm sind jene Asra, welche sterben, wenn sie lieben. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, yes. <laughs> so it's a poem. It's a poem about the Sultan's daughter, obviously, uh, and the slave who's dying of love of her. He's just fading away as he's standing there. So I think I've got it back on now, Helen. Have I? You have, lovely. Good. So there will be a report on that project. Yes, strictly in isolation in the northeast. But if you're interested in having a go at something like it and would like our teacher's notes and our anthology, just ask me and I'll send them to you. Um, you might also be able to share our YouTube channel if you had some entries uh, at some point as well. So I'm very happy to share that with you. <coughs> so there she is, the Zultan's Tochter. And what I was doing with these year eights was I was trying to get them to learn as a whole class, the first quatrain, the first four lines of the poem. So that's what I'm going to see if I can do with you now. So everyone's going to have their own challenge now. You're going to see if you can join in with me. So this is what the poem is about. This is my translation of that poem, not a good translation, just my own. But you can see we've got, those are the images I was trying to give you beforehand. You can feel the mood of it. And then it goes on <laughs> to say that she comes this slave to say, um, I want to know who you are and where you come from and everything. And his, his final line is, I am one of those Azra, that's the name of his tribe, who die when they fall in love. And that's, the, that's why you needed your hankies. So I started off by asking him to think about long words in German compound nouns, which Germans love, and showed them a thing like this and got them to see if they could say it. So there's your first challenge, everyone. Those of you who don't have German, especially, big challenge. Can you say that word? That is one thing. And so what it is, it's a shop that rents out machines for polishing the floor. So in German, it's called, in one word, a Fussbodenschleifmaschinenverlei. We don't have that sort of thing in English, but it's a lovely concept. Here's another one. So this is a little box of matches, a tiny little box of matches, a Streichholzschechtelchen. And finally, there's a really long one. This is a football one for the sporting people with us this evening. Das Fußball Weltmeisterschafts Qualifikationsspiel. So it's a qualifying round for the football championship, but all in one word. That's why Germans can say so much because their words are so long. They're full of concepts. They don't have to limit themselves. If they had, if they had them in word count for languages today, Krista, they would fill the magazine with two words. <laughs> so here are the first, this is the quatrain I wanted them to try to remember. So I was got into it, to, I tried to get into it by saying, so there's some words along the top. You know mutter, don't you? And they say, yes, that's mother. And you'll know zon. So tochter, tochter is the word that might mean somebody else in the family. And eventually somebody would get it. So I'd say, so if we're making a compound noun, the sultan's daughter is all one word. Can you see it in the poem? Can you see it in the poem? Yes, you can. Sultan's doctor is there on the second line. Then I would say, okay, we've got that one. Stuck those things together to make one word. Here's another one. There's a word in there that says evening time. One word that says evening time. Anyone going to guess which word it is? And you're going to guess that it's this word here, Abendzeit, which is evening time. 
And now we're going to look for the words that you think might mean white water. This is where the fountain is, and it's got delicious white water, which is spraying around. Which of the words you think say white water? And somebody will eventually come up with the right ones down there. And then we go for up and down that are there, and the fountain, which is a spring, it's the same sort of word that we have in English. And finally, we're looking for our onomatopoeic word. Can you see a word that looks like a verb? and that looks as though it might mean splash, and it's the last word. Okay, so everybody, I'm going to split this now into two groups of words. Oh, I've forgotten those. So those are those two words right at the beginning, täglich and wunderschön. Probably the hardest word of the lot. So pick one of these groups of words, everyone. You can either pick täglich ging, or you can pick die wunderschöne, if you like that one, or Sultan's Tochter, or Auf und Nieder, or Um die Abendzeit, or Am Springbrunn, or Wo die Weißen Wasser, or Plätschern. So choose the one you like the sound of or the feel of in your mouth. Just try them in your mouth and decide which one you're going to memorize by heart. I'll read them to you again just so you get an idea of the sounds. Täglich ging. Die wunderschöne Sultanstochter auf und nieder, um die Abendzeit am Springbrunnen, wo die weißen Wasser plätschern. And what you're doing when I do that is you're looking and saying, is he going to make a mistake? Is he going to say something wrong? Then I can just jump on him and tell him he's got that wrong. Because we like that because we're language teachers, but our pupils like that too. So now you've got that, you've picked your favorite word. Is it in your mind? So now I'm going to show you just the, the roots of those words and see, can we, we need to unmute everybody, Helen, and see if we can read the whole thing together. Right, so if you could all unmute yourselves, I think I can unmute everybody. <coughs> I don't know how to do it. I've got mute all. Oh, unmute all. There we are. Everybody's unmuted. The babies and everyone might join in. Okay. I'll give you one more flash of the words. <laughs> the words again. Dan's doctor. Like go with more points than the United Yes, everybody. Right, so this is well. You can all mute yourselves now, do you think? So, so thank you very much. That was. I'll mute you, but I'm going to now unmute you. Um, um, Stephen, where are you? So unmute. I can probably do it. Yeah, thank you. Oh. That was probably one of the most exciting things I've heard for a long time. Uh, we all, were all reading at our different paces in different phases, but it was a wonderful performance. Congratulations to everybody. I think if I could work my clapping hands, I would be doing that now. So um, who, did you think at the start of this webinar that you'd be reciting a famous poem by Heinrich Heine by uh, five to nine in the evening? I don't think so. Well done, everybody. So there's just to confirm those were all the words where you were just saying. So if you're looking for poems, the uh, literature wiki is the place to go. As I say, I put the one there, the, the Concre that Helen recited for us just now this afternoon. Um, and I put another one there last week, which was um, a romantic poet about a, a butterfly called Le Papillon, which is very nice for different sorts of verbs, uh, for names of the verbs, not for their conjugation. So if you're trying to build up a list of verbs it might be nice to have a look at. That one is a, a free entry website. You don't need to be a member to go to that one. That's just open for anyone who wants to go there. So here are our teacher briefings again. Those are all the ones that we've done so far. And the latest two are on the right hand side at the bottom. And I wanted to explore a little bit the one about cultural capital, but it will be a little bit because I don't want to keep you longer than the time we promised. 
So this has had feature as about it in the magazine, as we've mentioned already. And that's the key bit that you need to know from what Ofsted says. Um, the essential knowledge that pupils need to be educated citizens. That's the core bit of it, the core bit of their information. So in the magazine, there are articles by language teachers. And of course, language teachers, when they hear the word culture, think about particular things because it's part of our curriculum. So they think about what we put across as, as culture, which is cultural knowledge quite often about geography, famous people, famous places, artists, those sorts of things, all of which are hugely positive and motivating aspects of the curriculum. Um, but I think we can also think more widely than that. So I think those elements are things we definitely need to make sure stay in our curriculum, that they don't get squeezed out by other things, uh, and that we try to make them as consistent as we can throughout our schools so that everyone gets the same experience. But I wanted to go on to this question, which is about the concept of cultural capital and what it really, what, why it's there, why it's in our curriculum and why Ofsted are mentioning it. So I think it's not restricted to that knowing about other people, that's part of it. I think it's also about the skills that our learners pick up throughout their experience of being at school in all of their subjects. So in the, the research, um, I forget the name of the man who wrote the research now, but it's in the, in the briefing. Uh, he talks about cultural capital being something that you take into your adult life to make you into a competent citizen, an educated citizen. So there's all sorts of things that we do in our classrooms. I think we do uniquely in our classrooms uh, that contribute to that. Not just knowledge about what's the capital of Spain, but we teach young people and younger children the importance of listening to each other, of taking turns, of speaking to each other clearly, of presenting themselves well, communicating, finding strategies to explain themselves when they don't know all the words. All of these things, I think, are important parts of cultural capital that we bring to our children and our, and our teenage learners um, that perhaps that don't happen in other parts of the curriculum so much because that, that's not what they're about. They're about bodies of knowledge more um, or about specific skills maybe. So I think those things are the ones that we can try to clarify in our departmental statements or whatever it might be, our notes to governors about what we do in languages, um, because that is what will help us to raise our profile, to say languages are not just a difficult subject that gets sidelined sometimes in the curriculum. They are, from the point of view of cultural capital, a central item of what our children experience. And if we have children, we have the chance to be involved in international projects, someone was mentioning Eat Twinning at the start of the webinar, then we expand that knowledge enormously straight away. Once they're trying to talk or communicate in some way with people in another country, then they're developing those skills even more widely. So I think that's an important thing for us to think about. And hopefully, if you have a look at that briefing and the questions that come at the end of it, you might find some other things that help you to uh, to bring out those strengths uh, that we as language teachers have that we don't always think about. So there we are, there's the link to the briefings. I knew it was in there somewhere. So they're all in there and that's in the members area of the website. So just a quick tour through where you're gonna find some new content at the moment. For primary teachers in particular, the primary zone has got new reviews and it's got a new phonics piece from uh, the lovely Sue Cave down in Thames Valley. And the secondary area of the website in the secondary zone, also open to all, there's a report about the performance project I mentioned just now. There's an item from a, a teacher, a uh, head of department down in Hampshire about the subject content of GCSE and how he feels as an experienced teacher and examiner about the new GCSE. There's a lot about online teaching and of course the taste of something different. I'm not gonna tell you what it's about. You have to look it up for yourself. Um, in the French zone, we have new content. This is for the members area once again, uh, including um, a new partner who I'm going to show you in the very last screen, I think, of this, of this presentation. In the German zone, we have things again about motivating stories. The idea of these stories is we're looking for good news stories, things that people are pleased to talk about, the things that make language teachers smile. If you've got one of those stories, I would love to have them so that we can try and shape them into something we can share on the website or in the magazine at some other point. 
There's the French zone once again, I don't know why that's in twice. And there you've got the strictly French competition I've just been telling you about. ELAPS is the CLIL project that we've been involved in now, an Erasmus Plus project that's been running now for two years and more, which is about to produce all of its resources over the summer holiday. They will appear on the website, on the ELAPS website that is, and you'll hear about them from AWL. The core of it is the 20 lesson plans and resources which form the center point of the whole of the ELAPS project really. So these have been written by teachers and resourced by teachers and they're planned in detail all the way through. For people who've never thought about doing a CLIL lesson before, it's the ideal way to get started really. So here's the French partner I wanted to mention to you uh, who's on that website once again. Francophonia is a, 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 it's a company, but it's a company with an international and a, a collaborative outlook. So they support language French teachers, people who are teaching French around the world. And they support them by giving them training opportunities uh, and resources and online training at the moment. And in the summer, usually they have what they call the University of Francophonie. Um, and they want to invite AWL members to go. It's probably not going to be this year because the things aren't going to be sorted out in time. But maybe next year we'll, we'll be sending out messages asking people if they would like to go for a fortnight to Nice to have some training with some French teachers from around the world, which sounds like a nice fortnight to be spending at the moment in particular. So just to summarize then about AWL, there is the webinar discount code right at the end. Um, we invented this one so that Helen in particular would know if anyone joined because of seeing something in one of the webinars. So do use that code at the checkout if you would like to join, having looked at the website and the magazine and heard all of the things that we're getting going with. And remember the thing in italics is my most important thing on the presentation really. It's all about getting involved with your community and doing things. You know what needs to be done, uh, but you are probably the person who needs to do it because nobody's going to do it for you unless you try and get it started. So find some friends and there are lots of friends out there and then get going. So if you're interested in other versions of this road show, if you're that sort of person, you can find them on the website as well. But again, in the members area, uh, I don't imagine anyone wants to do that. Um, if you want to get in touch with me on Twitter, that's my name there. Uh, if you have any other questions, I'm happy to stay around for a few minutes, but I realize my time is up. So some people may want to go already. Is there anything, Helen, that you've seen that people want to be asking? Well, I think mainly you really have managed to make it so that, they, I mean, you often mention about AWL being a home. This is your home. And I felt as if we've been at home here with an AWL family. Um, and you mentioned about, you know, things that make teachers smile I think you are one of those people Stephen Fox you make us smile but you also make us think and there's obviously a depth in what you're talking about with the cultural capital and when you look at all of the comments afterwards you'll see how people have reacted to that so before we perhaps open the floor to any questions because I know that some people might have to go soon um, can I just on behalf of everybody say thank you ever so much for putting this together and for all you've done for this and for all you do for the community so perhaps we'll open, you can open your mics and whatever we'll give Stephen, some thanks, and then lovely comments. Lovely, lovely the way you've engendered a lot of um, comments there. So, and really inspired on them. I mean, all of the ideas that are coming through here are great. Look, all the thanks. Um, so people are welcome to open their. Actually, if we stop the share, and then people can open up their. Uh, videos and either ask yourselves. I've got a couple of things that I picked up on on the way while people are doing that. Um, in particular, so Kerry was saying about um, being able to collect where where are there good examples of literature and poetry for this age group because it is now part of the Welsh curriculum, and that's where I wrote. I presume it's that it's the the wiki that you have so the to. wiki. Uh, that's what that's there for. We started that when the curriculum changed in England in 2014 and basically the things that are on the wiki there are two main areas of it one of them is uh, the book boxes so that's got individual texts in that teachers have sent in but not just the text but also how they suggest you might use it or how they how, how they have used it 
So it might have a PowerPoint in there, it might have a lesson plan, it might sometimes have a whole scheme of work. I know there is one for Le Petit Prince, which is like a half a term scheme of work around Le Petit Prince, the people who are that committed to Le Petit Prince. Um, so there's that area. And then there's also uh, for the, each of the language, the three big languages on the front page, there's an area called online texts for, lang for French, online texts for German and for Spanish. And if you go in there, you'll find, uh, it's basically a list of URLs, uh, but grouped by what you'll find in there. So if you're looking for nursery rhymes or for poems or for songs or stories or plays or whatever it might be, you'll find a way in from that point. And if you have a text to recommend, of course, you can also contribute your own text. That's the whole notion of the wiki that you share with us. Mm. Well. well, I know and that's what you've done sometimes when I've shared something on Twitter, you've said to me, oh, how about adding this to the wiki? So mm. it's great. Um, are there any other questions from people? Because I think what's happened is that as, as people have asked questions, having um, Krista there in particular, who knows the website inside out, um, she was able to answer quite a lot of questions <laughs> she went through. So um, any, anybody else who's got any questions? Otherwise, I think I'm going to ask people again to open there because I, I forgot to take the class down. Yes, was that Deborah? Somebody wanting to ask a question? No? So I was just oh, sorry. Uh, I was, uh, I was, hi, hi, could I ask a question, please? Yeah, yes, Fatima. Yes, Fatima. Fatima. Yes. Hi, Helen. Hi. I was interested in the poems poem uh, uh, competition that students can uh, do their own video and send their poems because I did the uh, project. I used Clil in my classroom, and we did the project uh, with the. Uh, the work with the Goldsmith University this year, and it was about our planet. Yes, very and good. And my student did uh, poems. They all created their own poems, but uh, we didn't develop it to a video or to uh, the way you've described it, described it, Stephen. So yeah. uh, would it be still possible that they uh, develop their, their work to a video and present it and send it? Or what's, what's your thinking? I, I think that sounds like a lovely thing, because obviously we also want, we want a whole range of languages on there. It would be lovely to have, a, have had some of the... Um, would yours be in Arabic or...? Yes, yeah. in Arabic and translated in English. Mm. So, so if, if, I, if I send you the notes about the project, it'll mm -hmm. tell you about, about the, our email address which is where you send the video to when it's completed. And then once we have got the YouTube channel uh, sorted, there's nothing in there at the moment, then we'll send that back to you so you can have a look at it. Excellent. And uh, we have created as well a film about uh, uh, our planet. My yeah. students created the films in relation to pollution and uh, animal extinct, mm. and it's uh, finished. So we could send this as well. and. We do we do something called digital storytelling. Yes, that's our that. our way of uh, uh, doing the approach of Clear. Very good. Anybody else? You can actually you know, physically put your hand or put your. Hand. I just realised I can't see everybody's um, mm. picture, so I don't. So probably, yeah. I think you just have to say something. I know that Chris has got something. I was just going to go back to the ALL wiki and just say that. Um, I, I'm quite a recent um, viewer of that, really, and um, because you forget of all these amazing things that are there, um, and you just have to simply set up a very basic account. It doesn't cost anything, and um, it's just very, very simple and straightforward to do. Then you get immediate access, and you can download things. You can add things. It's very straightforward. In fact, it's so easy, you almost don't think you've done it correctly. I'll warn you. But yeah, that's all I was going to say. <laughs> Any other questions from anybody? I had a quick one. What's digital storytelling? Ah, so this is a project that was run from Goldsmiths, I think. Is that right, Fatima? Yes, that's right. It's yeah. creating a, a story, but digitally. Instead okay. of writing it only and keeping it in books, you we develop it to a, a digital, where students create a film from their story and share it with other schools or other uh, peers from other places and so the goldsmith university has led this approach and we are uh, following it to implement it from different languages and i use arabic to to do this stories 
you have an example of a story you did? Yes, I've got a few. If you want, I can send you. Like, like uh, we did, uh, yeah, we did, this year we did about uh, our planet. Last year we did about bullying and it was uh, in uh, relation to uh, a, a po uh, an art which opposed uh, discrimination. And my student chose bullying as an opposing uh, view against discrimination. Which lecturer so, ran, ran it? Uh, sorry, what do you mean lecturer? Was there a, a professor at Goldsmiths who ran the project? Uh, uh, it's, he's, he, uh, there is there's a Vicky, Vicky she's uh, a lecturer there. And there is uh, Jim Anderson, who used to be a lecturer there, but he has uh, retired. Thank you. So can I You're suggest, welcome. Is that all right, Fatima? Anybody who wants to send us a link? That, oh yes put that onto the web page along with everything else to do with this evening um and certainly that's something which i'm sure eventually we will sort out somewhere on the awl national site for all of these things but if quickly just for sake tonight i can put it on there and then put a link to the site. excellent i'll do that It'll be lovely thank you any other questions no? Okay. Can I just take one last picture of everybody, please? Now that, and you can all know that I'm taking a picture of you. So I should be going one, two, three, smile. All right. So, yes, let's all do our hair. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't know who's behind the iPad there, but I just noticed you there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, and welcome. There's Mart, who's just written that he's just joined AWL tonight. So, right. welcome to our, our family, Mart. It's great to hear. So I've got two pages here, so I'm going to do this first page first. I'm always at an advantage because I know when I'm going to do it, so I'll make sure I look right. <laughs> All right, is everybody here? Me. So here goes, and one, two, three. There, that's one. And I do do another one in case when I look through. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'll just do one more on this, on these. Oh, I have to do, uh, use that one. So again, page one, one, two, three. There we are. I'm now going to page two, where some of you will appear on page one and page two. So here we go. So this starts with Tim in the corner there. So, and <laughs> lovely smile from Tim. Everybody joining one, two, three. There we are. And I'll do another one. Here it goes. And one, two, three. Oh, we've got Christine's thumb there. One, two, three. And, oh, and Tim looked away then. Right, we got to have <laughs> One, two, three. Yeah, good, we got all of you. Lovely. Okay. There is a brilliant opportunity for a story about a thumb after this evening, you know, digital mm. storytelling, thinking about translation. I'm just thinking <laughs> about this now. For the next road show, Stephen, that's everyone's challenge. Yeah, a thumb. <laughs> okay. Monsieur Pousse. <laughs> I thought that was a lovely idea. I mean, to, the, the thing that I didn't say during it was this whole thing about the challenge. I told Stephen this because I was so, I mean, it's made me practice again and again to the extent the other day down in the village, while I was waiting for my husband to come out of the baker's, I was on my bike just saying these words aloud and a woman passed and said, are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of just saying yes, I felt somehow I needed to tell it the whole story and she wasn't really that interested. So even now she'll be telling someone else. <laughs> you know, I saw this woman down in East Horsley. <laughs> I meant to tell you, when I was in my cellar today, I found this, which was from about 10 years ago. And this is the same German poem, which I've cut up into strips so that children can sort them into the right order. But my favourite one is this one, because it's my favourite German word ever, which is probably too small for you to see. But my Dina Zipschaft, it's just a lovely word in German. Yes. It means your, your, uh, your genetic inheritance. Great. Okay. Well, we could stay here all night, really, couldn't we? Absolutely. 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 Lovely. And so nice to see, because I don't think we've done this before with it being particularly with an AWL focus. I mean, obviously I begin the webinars by saying, please join AWL, but this is really rather nice, isn't it? Having something where we can do, and, and not just technology. 
um, other things as well. So, so we, we have one every every term, really, is the idea, isn't it, Stephen? That's right, yes. So we'd be having another one sort of around end of October time. It would be the October, well, just after the October half term. Yeah, so we can have another one because then. They go out at, at half term and then it takes me a few days just to stick them together. So if you're a member of ALL, you'd get that from your really the local branches tend to disseminate it and do things but we thought if we always do this as well so that if you don't catch it that way you have a way of catching up so and i think yes yeah, a little challenge i think other people could be doing a challenge and challenges, we, challenges is, uh, we're, we're good at dealing with challenges in our country nowadays <laughs> <laughs> we are an idea which i haven't taken up on yet i know that um you know, with Carrie, we did say that we'd quite like to just have a social evening once, just um, sharing French songs that we like and listen. Mm -hmm. rather than That's just... right. I still got, um, I've got a list ready, Helen. Yeah, we will sort that out. What that will be so much fun. This, this Saturday evening, perhaps? Oh, so, 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 it's my birthday tomorrow. All Happy right. birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Well, That's look, fun. Krista, look what I'm reading. <laughs> <laughs> No, my husband didn't say to me, he said, I can't believe that you're not a bit more um, about this. And I just, I almost still can't believe it's real, genuinely. And when someone says, and someone says nice things on, on Twitter or holds my book, I kind of just pinch myself. <laughs> I still can't believe that. And when I gave a copy to Helen and I posted one to Stephen and uh, I was just thinking, it makes a good door wedge or something like that. Uh, you could use it as a coffee mat. I don't know. What can I say? An expensive one, but hopefully not too much. So, nice. Yeah. Thank lovely. you. I look, really I, look for, I haven't started yet. Oh, thank but you. The content is lovely, but also I like it's got a really nice smooth cover. Yeah. To it. I don't know what it is. It's a sort of velvety touch. Um, I never thought I'd be doing this on Thursday evening. Someone's stroking a coffee. Can <laughs> someone tell me how velvety it was? I'll show you. I'm tired. I know. Oh, no. So, Karine, can you guess what I was listening to when I was testing my sound before the webinar? A French song, a fairly recent French song. Helen will know because I play it every time I see her. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I was play. It's a wonderful song for singing along to. It's a Maître Gims. Oh, j'adore. I, do. <laughs> I did say to Helen, oui, c'est laquelle? C'est la même? It's the one called uh, je, je sais pas si je t'aime. Oui, c'est celle-là. Oh, j'aime, ouais. It's a very good song for singing. Magnifique, ouais. Et c'est marrant parce que ma fille a fait quelque chose à l'école là où elle est. Il fallait qu'un truc sur leur chanteur préféré. Elle a choisi Maître Gims. Donc, elle a proposé à l'école. C'était pas du tout avec le français. Mm -hmm. De très belles chansons. There you are, there's someone saying, I'd love to know the names of French songs suitable for teenagers. Oh, uh, Maître Gims, <laughs> Soprano. <laughs> yeah. We had a very good session, didn't we? we had, um, we've had sessions on music, but very often it's focusing on the technique you use to teach it. And we said afterwards, but we just like to just listen to it sometimes. <laughs> and often it's tantalizingly, they start it and you're all starting to go like this and then it stops. I know um, Hannah White's online. I can see her, lovely Hannah from Bristol. And she, in, in her amazing primary hub, there is a gentleman called many things, but DJ Matisse is, Matisse is one of them. And he is just incredible. Ah. I work as an observer to their primary hub. I mean, Hannah, speak up and share the- Oh, we need to invite team, it. Helen. It's incredible, <laughs> isn't he, Hannah? We might finish in a garden party dancing. I'm me and myself. <laughs> he's fabulous. He's so motivating. And he spoke at the at the show and tell as well, didn't he? But mm. he's wowed us all and he just gets you all in. But he's done lots of stuff on culture and yeah. um, mm. francophonie. Yeah. I recommend him. Follow him on Twitter. I'll get his I'll get his okay. um, handle and put it in the chat. Okay. Someone's asking if there are any playlists and there and there are, and you'll find yeah, on them. Spotify in, in the playlist I was thinking. Uh, the Goethe Institute have one on their website, and I know that I think there's a French one in the wiki as well, so you can look there. Yeah, and we had one from the webinar, Ellen. Um, who was it? Is that music or Jacques Paco Fernandez? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. He had, um, I think it's MFL Music, and he's got a playlist on his, on his website as well. Mm. So Paco wrote some, uh, some of the, the content in the book that I wrote about songs 
Ah, you see, small, small word. If you want to find out more about Which that. Which we can talk about. I mean, really, there are just so many themes, aren't there? But this, I think songs and music is always a very popular one because you just feel as if you are, well, you're learning loads, aren't you? But it's a oh, nice thing, thing to do and... Yeah, we need to do that. So you've got your birthday tomorrow, so you can't do it this weekend. Perhaps the next weekend, Karim. Well, um, next weekend, that's better. Yes, because after it's the June event, isn't it? Yes. So yes. busy. Well, yes, we've got the June event. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely going to, I've definitely put down. Yes, write it down at 13 and we can um, see yeah, what we can do. In July, we thought in July we'd have just a nice social evening where it is for anybody who wants to come along and we could do some games and listening to music and things like that so that'd be lovely yeah so it's good well gosh you people are disappearing yeah well i'm gonna get to my book <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> yes and christian i mean sometime for you to do a webinar because i really enjoyed your session at awl oh thank language you language worlds yeah you asked me about that and i've just kind of not really. I've just kind of gone. Oh no! There's so many amazing people. Like so many amazing people here tonight. You know, I'm looking at Nina. I'm looking at Karin. Uh, there's Kerry somewhere. I've watched Kerry's already. There's there's one of the lovely ladies from MFL Swave C and part of the collection. There's certain. There's Helen. You see, there's so many. There was Charlie Bernie here earlier. There's there's Chris up at the top there. You know, there's so many people. I'm just thinking, yeah, these guys need to do webinars. I can sit and listen yeah, to all their amazing yes. stuff. Anybody, anybody can offer to do it. it. It's lovely, really, and and I quite like the idea of having non-technical stuff as well because people are saying at the moment, aren't they? We're looking for ideas of how they can do cultural things. Oh, I can definitely yeah. do that. I can't do the techie one. That's definitely <laughs> I can do a cultural one though. <laughs> we had um, and I, the, the drama teacher at our school was saying how she feels that people are just doing too much online, and she's going to set us all a challenge of reach. She's, she's called Ridley, Hannah Ridley. Um, actually, the, the the niece of someone who was in our feeders ain't pet, but anyway, but she's going to put Ridley's Ridley's recreation, I think it is, and you've got to find some sort of scene from um, art or theatre, and with the people around you in your home with your objects, you've got to recreate that scene. Nothing to do. Oh with my gosh, that's brilliant! I just thought, what a lovely idea of you know making them look at something which is arty, but then recreate it. Brilliant. So, Used to be something I'd give kids to do in the in the Musée d'Orsay. One of the tasks was now go to a picture and recreate that picture yourselves. <laughs> That's lovely. I think I've seen something like that. It's really good. Mm. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I shall now go and um, uh, what I do because this is oh, it's still recording, by the way. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> <laughs> I should go, I'll start the recording and then I go to the live stream and this is where it's great because it's gone on the live stream. I, I didn't notice any conversation. So although it said 10 people watching, I'm not sure whether they just clicked there by mistake. <laughs> I'm listed, so I don't know how that happened, but I can just, and now I can just trim it and it's ready straight away. So I'll do that. And then if Stephen, anything you want to send me to, to yeah, put on the I'm website. To send you, I'm going to send you the handout and the documents about the Strictly in isolation. Yeah. And do you do the, the, the um, PowerPoint as well you use, would that be relevant? I can send you that if you want, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think in a way, just to have all the bits and pieces there that people can remember and relive the experience. I say it's uploaded on the ALL website, but um, if you want the link as well, but that I guess is in, his, is in Stephen's presentation already, so. Which one? Uh, both your roadshow from this evening. Ah, uh -huh, yes, true. So, yeah. So that's on the AWL site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that'd be good. No, but it'd be good to give the the link to that because then it directs traffic to AWL, which mm -hmm. is. Well, I'll send you the. I'll email you the link in a second, Helen. Yeah, that's all right. Well, I shall stop the recording now. Can I just ask a question, please? Oh yes. Uh, I'm Hi, Stephanie. Stephanie. <laughs> yeah, I'm. We'd be quite interested in um, probably trying to set up um, all network you know, around etc. area, but uh, I don't really know how to set that up. And I know you've got some information on the website, but I wondered if you had, if I could make contact with one of you, I mean, maybe Krista, I don't know, or if you would plan to have maybe a webinar or some kind of, you know, a session where you would connect people together in an area or you would give some tips on how to set that up, that would be great. Whereabouts are you, Stephanie? In Exeter. Mm -hmm. 
Stephanie's at the St. James's hub, um, the MFL hub down in